It was a different kind of Passover meal, to say the least. I remember, right when I sat down, Philip leans over to me and he whispers, Hey, Thomas, I feel like something special is going to happen tonight. I lean back to him and I say, I doubt it. I was wrong. Jesus got up from the table. He walked over and grabbed a basin of water and a towel. I remember at the time thinking, what's Jesus doing with the foot water? I doubt he's going to wash somebody's feet. I was wrong. Jesus knelt down. He began to wash Bartholomew's feet. Bart just sat there. He didn't say anything, didn't move. None of us did. Jesus finished. He went on to James and Andrew and the rest of us. I remember at the time thinking, this is so strange and yet so wonderful. I doubt anyone is going to say anything right now. I was wrong. You know who broke the silence? Peter. No way are you going to wash my feet. That's what I told him. I looked at him. I said, Jesus, you can wash other people's feet. But you're not washing mine. I mean, you're the king. He just looked at me and he said, well, then you can't have any part of me. And I'm like, ouch. Okay, wash my feet, wash my hands, wash my whole body if you have to. And he just looked at me and he said, no, Peter, your feet will do just fine. In the midst of washing our feet, he teaches us servanthood. Then Jesus took some bread and some wine. He blessed it, served it to us. He said it was a new covenant with his blood. Then he said, tonight, all of you will lose faith in me. I remember thinking right then, lose faith in you? Never. But I didn't say anything. I just sat there. I couldn't just sit there. I had to say something. So I said, Jesus, I love you. You can count on me. Everybody else may fall away, but I won't. You can count on me. He just looked at me. And he smiled, and he said, Peter, you will deny me three times by tomorrow morning. Ouch. The next thing I knew, we were wrapping things up and heading to the garden to pray. Once we got to the garden, it just got crazy. Jesus asked Peter, James, and myself to go a little further into the garden with him and pray. And we did. We tried. We kept falling asleep. Jesus kept waking us up. I remember one time he said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's true. It's all just a blur. And to think this whole mess got started because of Judas. Did he really think what he was doing was right? There. There he is. The one uh, praying by himself. Now, the others, they'll try to come up and create some kind of a scene, but the one I kiss on the cheek... He's the one you want. Now, 30 pieces of silver, right? That's what we agreed on, 30 pieces. Forget about the rest. He's the one you want. The one I kiss on the cheek. A kiss? 
Judas betrays Jesus with the kiss of a friend. Then it got crazy. Peter grabs a sword, cuts off this guy's ear, and Jesus reached down, picks up the ear, and puts it back on this guy's head as if nothing had happened. And then, then they took him. I'd love to say we fought for him, but we didn't. Everyone ran. I ran. I'm so ashamed. What have I done? What have I done? Was I really so stupid to think that I... I, I killed him? I killed him. I crucified Jesus. I crucified Jesus. That's what the crowd wanted. That's what they got. Personally, I don't think that man did anything to deserve that, but I was just a soldier doing my job. When the governor gave a sentence, that's when I went to work. I loved that job. Felt like I was administering justice every time I nailed someone to a tree. But that man, that man didn't deserve that. Made no sense. There I was, rotting in a jail cell for stealing, murdering, pfft, you name it, I'd done it. I knew I stepped one foot outside that jail cell. That was it. So the guards, they came and they got me, and they put me next to this guy, Jesus, who'd been, looked like he'd been beaten to a bloody pulp, and Governor Pilate, he starts going, which one of these people do you want me to set free? So I, pfft, it was obvious. The crowd's going to go, let Jesus go, and then I'm going to tell them where they could go. And then the crowd, they started chanting, Barabbas? I mean, they were saying my name? They were saying it over and over again. The guards, they just threw me into the crowd and they took this Jesus off to Golgotha. Made no sense. There I was, a, a marked man, marked for death. Next minute, I'm free? Made no sense. So I followed him all the way to Golgotha. I was stationed at Golgotha that day. We had just raised the second criminal by the time they brought him to me. I'll never forget the way he looked. He had been beaten, spit on, whipped. He was unrecognizable as a man. Hideous. What was left of his clothes was stripped off him and he was thrown down on the cross. And that's when I went to work. Now, generally, when you crucify a man, the first hand is the most difficult. The criminal wants to get away and he fights you. So I would have two soldiers hold him down. But this guy, he didn't put up a fight. I just thought he was exhausted. As an executioner, I've been called every name in the book. I've had men yell at me, plead with me, but I wasn't prepared for that. He looked at us. He looked at me, and he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. He 
forgave me. Forgive them? He said, forgive them? Who is he? Forgive them? It was supposed to have been me up there. It should have been me dying on that cross. He took my place? Forgive them. And I remember I looked up. And he took this deep, agonizing breath. And he said, it is finished. And then he died. Surely, this man was the son of God. 